Hello friends, welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things I've been working on lately. Today is October 2nd, 2022, and this is episode number 58. Today I am wearing the original flax pattern, which is for worsted weight. I think it's worsted, worsted or DK. Mine is knit out of Cascade 220. I can't remember if it's the superwash or the non-superwash, but either way, um, I think it's the superwash. This yarn is very old. <laughs> anyway, this is my very first sweater I ever knit. Uh, if I were to re-knit it, I would definitely make sure I was on gauge because I think this is a bit tight and I would probably go up a size, but here we are. It is chilly today and this is what we're wearing. Um, I am drinking a mimosa. So grab yourself a mimosa and join me or uh, whatever tasty beverage that you would like to enjoy. Uh, today has been a very busy day. And if I remember, I will talk about that at the end. Um, I always forget to mention this, but you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and of course YouTube where you're watching me here uh, as Shauna Stitches. I don't have any finished objects today, but I do have two half objects. The first one is this beautiful sock. This is gonna be a gift. And it is knit out of Fable or Fabelle. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Drops yarn. In the colorway, 911. And I looked this up and Ravelry tells me it is the color Picnic. So I don't know if that's true or not. It's not what, it doesn't say on the label, but I could see this being a picnic. I think we have some strawberries and maybe a salad or grapes. That could be grapes. Blueberries. Uh, maybe the purple's grapes. I don't know. I'm making it all up. Anyways, um, as I said, this is a gift. And I have started the second one, but it is just a tiny little, very tiny little start. That's it. That's what we got. So I was given the idea by Anna of Zebra Yarns. You might know her. She's uh, really infamous for dyeing uh, self-striping yarns. And uh, we were talking on Instagram and she suggested that I take a project with me to work. And I kept saying, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Um, but I did. And I knit this. This sock probably took, I don't know, a couple weeks, um, but I tend to get to work early, so I get a couple rows in before the day starts, and if I'm stuck having to wait for something, um, I don't have a ton of time, but a little bit is better than nothing, and I actually have something to show for it, so that's awesome. The other half object I have is this one here. This is the Dustland Sock by Stephen West. And it's his newest sock pattern. This is his second sock pattern that's come out. I am not remembering, oh, actually I do have the tag. I was gonna say, I don't remember what this yarn is, um, but it is Audine Wools. This is from Knit Crate, which I no longer subscribe to, but I do have a lot of sock yarn left from them. And this is the luxury sock in the color Calico Quilt just this pretty minty green with purple speckles. And it's a seven, uh, 75 superwash merino, 15 nylon on 10% cashmere. And this is my first time ever knitting a cashmere pair of socks. Wouldn't it be nice if they were for me? <laughs> they aren't. Uh, this is going to be a gift as well. So this is a pretty fun pattern. It's a, uh, I believe the same stitch pattern as his Dustland sweater. I think he may even have a Dustland shawl. I haven't knit either, uh, but it's it's super simple. I will say, you know, I had a look at the pattern, um, but once I started on a section, I could just knit it no problem, but it's all just knits and purls. So it's easy, uh, but also I had to pay attention. The pattern on these call for a 2.25. But 
he doesn't use standard stitch counts, um, at least not the standard ones that I'm used to. So I normally knit a woman's sock on 64 stitches on a 2.25, but the pattern has 60 stitches. So I went up to a 2.5, which is the same as the Rainer or Shine socks that I knit before, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. So these are going to continue to be worked on uh, in the spare moments that I have. Um, I've mentioned it before and I'm sure many of you are aware, but the uh, West Knits uh, Mystery Knit Along is starting in five days. So all my other projects are gonna be going by the wayside and I will knit on that exclusively. And then if I happen to have time left over after finishing the clue, then I'll pick up some other projects. So the next project I have to show you is so much bigger than the last time I showed you. This is the Travel Mode 2.0. You see the stitch marker right here? That's where I was last time I showed you. So I was on section five. I have now completed section 18, which is this one at the very top that's rolling. Um, most of the shawl is in garter stitch, but this happens to be in stockinette. I am knitting this completely out of a yarn to die for advent from last year. And this is such a great advent calendar pattern. I only have one little concern, but I'll, I'll let you guys know about that in a minute. But each day, it, or each section is a different day. So this was day one of the calendar. Day two is this sky blue. Three was this purple. And then there's a tiny section in there right there. That's section four. So I repeated day one. And then I went to day, I lost count. This is day four, which is where I was last time. Day five. Day six is this really pretty kind of like harvest color. That's what I think of it as. Um, it reminds me of Thanksgiving. Um, now I've lost count. Number seven is again another sort of speckly blue. It reminds me of the sky. Eight is sort of a Halloween-y kind of color. Um, it reminds me of pumpkins. And nine is this beautiful forest green. Section 10, now I've lost count. Maybe this is actually section 11. I repeated color block number two, that sky blue right there. And now I really can't keep count of which is which because I, I lose track of which section. Um, but yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. Some of my favorite colors so far in the advent are this little section here. This one is a pretty mint with red and forest green. And that one's pretty. This one reminds me of this one I'm talking about right here. Reminds me of Christmas lights. Yellows and blues and green and red. So pretty. And then this really beautiful peachy yellow speckle. This side. There's a blue stripe. There's another very Christmassy one right here. And this one reminds me of chocolate covered cherries. Probably once upon a time I had a list of what these colors were called. Maybe <laughs> I don't anymore. Um, but yeah, it's just getting so big. I love it. So I'm over halfway. Uh, like I said, this one was section 18. And I believe there's 28 sections altogether which is why I'm reusing some of those colors for the small little sections. Um, each mini I have is 20 grams and I'm having more than enough, way more than enough um, to finish each section. And then when I come to one of those small little bits, I refer back to my notes and find the mini that I have the most of, and then I, I just knit it. So I think this little section took maybe six to eight grams. And the larger sections take, oh, 13 to 15, something like that. So the one concern I have, and I don't have a plan for it, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, is that there's some kind of border that goes around the whole entire thing. And if you're looking at the actual pattern, it will tell you to use the main color. 
um, there's several sections here that are supposed to be the main color. All of these tiny triangles are the main color. These little, little blips. Um, this would be the main color. Again, these triangles. The section I just finished would be the main color. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so that would go all the way around the outside. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to look at what it's actually, how it's knit. If it's an I-cord, I think I could just use leftover pieces and just have different lengths and different colors all along the outside. That might be cool. But I'm not sure that it is an I-cord, so I need to look into that. I am using 3.5 millimeter bamboo clover needles, nothing fancy. Um, the reason I'm using these, because they are not my go-to, is because all my other needles had stuff on them. And these were sitting in my little needle storage, and I thought, oh, why not? And I just have to say, I'm enjoying them more than I thought I would, um, quite a lot more, actually. It's making me think of getting a wooden needle set maybe. Um, the only thing I don't like is the cord, but you know, there are plenty of nicer, nicer needle sets that don't have nice cords. So I don't know, just something I'm thinking about. If I were really on the ball, I wouldn't have a million whips and I would have more than enough needles. That's no fun, is it? <laughs> Um, another whip that I have not showed you in a very long time is my jigsaw puzzle blanket. And that's because I keep forgetting to bring it out. It, it normally lives in my craft room and I only bring it out, um, while I'm working on it, which I do one section for every set of days off that I have. So, uh, let's see here. Where was I? Okay. So I was on section five, which is this peachy color. You see the little marker there? And I have finished, I wanna say 13. Um, let me see, can I show you this? It's getting huge. So that was five. This is number six, this uh, light mint. Number seven, I think is this little purple triangle. And then eight was the pink one. Nine is this one. 10 is the green. 11 was the gray, and this is 12. So I guess I've done 12. So the next one is 13. That's gonna go right along here, and that's gonna be purple. So, so far I have not duplicated any of the yarns. Um, so while this teal and this one are similar, hopefully you can see, they are not the same. Um, there we go, this one's actually lighter. And my goal was to match the teal in this, which I think it's very close. Like, hopefully you can see that. And then the color that's going to go right here is going to match that purple, or at least come close to matching. So yeah, this is getting huge. I am very happy with the progress that I've made by just doing one little section each day, each set of days off. It allows me to still make progress on this, but not have it as my main focus and get other projects done because I could see myself working on this exclusively, um, but I don't know. I have other things I want to do. So yeah, very much enjoying this. I highly recommend the pattern. It's meant to be knit with a marled two strands of sock yarn, but I am knitting it out of a bunch of both DK and worsted weight acrylic that I have in my stash uh, from when I mostly did crochet. All right. We aren't done yet, but we almost are. The next work in progress I have is the Love Note sweater. So I know a million people have knit this, but I have not knit it before. And there's where we are. I cast this on yesterday, if you can believe that. But it's knit on ginormous needles. And um, in fact, I'm using six, six millimeter. Yep, six millimeter needles for the main uh, part and it's 4.5 for the ribbing. I've had this yarn in my stash for at least two years, probably more, specifically for a love note. 
And the yarns are Holstgarn Super Soft in the color Iced and Holstgarn Titicaca, which is alpaca. I'm 12 because I just like saying Titicaca. I, I'm probably not even saying it right, but anyhow. Uh, and this is the color Monet. So those two together make a really pretty fabric. Oh, you know what? I have my swatch. What happened to my swatch? Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Found it. It had fallen on the floor when I picked up the sweater. So if you can believe that, um, that's what the fabric looks like after it's washed. So let's see, a little side by side here. Which is e easier said than done, I, I realize. So you can really see the difference. The stitches really bloom. Um, it really becomes so much nicer. I mean, I know it still looks see-through, but if you're looking at um, just one layer of the fabric here versus here, um, it's definitely different. So I got gauge. Um, this pattern calls for one strand of fingering weight and one strand of mohair, but this lace weight alpaca is still fuzzy, kind of like a mohair. Um, it's extremely soft. I've never ever used this, uh, but I really like it. I think it is a nice alternative to mohair. It seems to shed less, which is nice. Um, I, I don't know about for warmth because mohair is quite warm. I think alpaca is known to be quite warm too. The other thing I know about alpaca, which I've never knit with before, but I've heard plenty of people say, is that it doesn't hold its shape. So holding it with the super soft means that it will have that structure, but it should add warmth and softness and all those good things that we're looking for in a sweater. I finished the lace portion, which was a lot of fun. I really am anxious to see what that looks like blocked out. It doesn't look terrible now, but I, I'm pretty sure it will look a lot better. <laughs> uh, I have, so I'm worried I'm gonna run out of yarn. I have three balls of the Super Soft, which is 287 meters or 314 yards each. So I have, a, you know, just over 900 yards. But I only have two of these. And this one is 400 meters off the top of my head. I think that's like 437 yards. So I have roughly 900 yards of each. And I just don't do crop sweaters. Like I said, this has been in my stash for over two years. And um, over two years ago, Shauna did not think about how much more yarn I'd like to have to extend the length. So not that I would have done crop back then. I just think I didn't think of it. I just looked at the yardage and the pattern and figured that'd be fine. Especially because in the pattern, if you look at it, it mentions for a cropped version and then they, I don't know if they call it the longer version or, you know, anyway, it's longer. Um, so it shows yardages for two different ones. And I went for the yardage that the longer version had. However, that's still quite short. So you'll notice I've already put on the neckline. This pattern starts with a provisional cast on, which I did. I knit the entire first skein of the super soft i quit there i added the neckline and now i'm doing the sleeves all that so that i can use every last inch of the other yarns that i have left i thought about making the sleeve shorter but i don't really want to so it's going to be very interesting to see what exactly i can get out of this 900 yards especially because I have a second sweater's quantity in another color for this project, exact same stats. Three of the Super Soft, uh, two of the Titicaca and whatnot. One thing I wanted to mention about, well, about this pattern, but sort of any pattern in general, is I cannot seem to do a magic loop when the circumference of the needles is large. And like I said, these are six millimeter needles that's a big needle, size US 10, in case you don't know the correlation there. So I started doing these magic loop because they do not make nine inch circulars in a six millimeter size. At least I haven't been able to find them. 
And you can see right there, uh, it's not exactly a ladder, but I have some stitches that are bigger than the rest. I don't, I don't like how that looks. So the next thing I did was to switch to these DPNs, which are not showing very well because of the glare. Um, but these are the Knitter's Pride Zings. I love these needles generally. They are a metal DPN, um, just pointy enough. I mean, I don't know. I really like these. I have both fixed. I have a interchangeable set and I have a sock set of DPNs. So anyway, I, I do like them a lot. But when you're knitting such a large gauge and I don't know how to, like floppy fabric, uh, I guess we call that drape, right? Um, a drapey fabric, it's just so heavy. So I, I went to Joann's today because I did not have any other DPNs in this size. And I picked up a set of DPNs in the six millimeter and I got a set of DPNs in the 4.5, which is for the ribbing. And like I said, with the other wooden needles, I don't generally use wood, but they do have a time and a place. And this is the time and the place. Um, out of curiosity, I weighed one of these Clover bamboo DPNs versus the metal zing. This weighs four grams. One of the metal zings weighs 10 grams. So that's huge when you're trying not to stretch out your stitches. And um, so I mean like right there, that's 12 grams that the sleeve is holding up. If it were the zings, that'd be 30 grams. Um, it's just a lot. So I'm enjoying it much more now that I have it on the bamboo. Hopefully it doesn't change my gauge drastically, but these sleeves are knit with no decreases. So I don't think it should be a problem. And this sweater has a lot of ease. So anyway, I'm gonna finish both the, the sleeves and then continue to work on the body. But again, um, all that will take a backseat to the mystery knit along. Okay, what else? I think that's all the knitting stuff I have. And now we'll talk about a little bit of life stuff because holy crap, I have a lot of life stuff. Some of it I can't talk about it, uh, but some of it I can. And I'm just gonna start it by saying things have been extremely stressful around here. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I think I told you guys that Fiona was going in for surgery uh, where she was having a lump removed from under her armpit. The surgery went fine. She came out of the anesthesia just fine. She is ornery as ever. Uh, she does not like taking her antibiotics, but uh, she's almost done with those. And, but they sent off the area that was removed to the lab and it came back as cancer. There's a good and a bad to that. I mean, obviously cancer is never good, but they told me that it is, I said something about plasma, which I don't understand, but it's a very slow growing type of cancer. So from what they're telling me, it doesn't sound like there's any risk that it went to her internal organs or anything like that. I just have to be on the lookout for any other bumps that appear on her skin that would need to be removed. So that was rough. And then uh, last podcast, if you watch, I mentioned that Rudy was also going to the vet and I was going to have to talk to them about, you know, if it was time to um, put him to sleep and that sort of thing. And, you know, no pet owner wants to have that conversation, but he just wasn't eating. He was losing a bunch of weight. So I brought him in. He was losing so much. He He's normally at his healthiest weight. He's nine pounds. He had lost 1.8 pounds of weight in a month. He, like I said, didn't want to eat, didn't want to do anything. And I was really reluctant. They wanted to do blood work. And I was just like, well, why? We just did blood work a month ago. And we know that he has pancreatitis, which, you know, causes them not to have an appetite, causes them to throw up, all kinds of stuff. And I just didn't, I mean, lab work is not cheap. I didn't want to pay for it just to know that he has pancreatitis again because I already knew that. But they convinced me. I said, go ahead, do the blood work. Well, it turns out that Rudy has kidney disease and uh, you can't cure that. And it's very much 
almost seems to be in conflict with the pancreatitis because for that, for the pancreatitis, he's supposed to have a very bland diet. He, um, he just has to like take care of his stomach, if that makes sense. But for the kidney disease, uh, they lose their appetite anyway. He's going to be nauseous anyway. And he was on prescription. Um, I think it's Hill Science Diet. He was on a prescription dog food for that, which was specific to the pancreatitis. And he, he just wasn't liking it. He wasn't wanting to eat it. So they sent me home with one can of the Hills prescription food for kidney. And he loved it. So apparently what they do is they make it more palatable is how the vet put it. Because they already know that they're having to overcome the urge not to want to eat. So they make it extra tasty. So I asked her, well, she says, uh, I asked her a lot of things, but I asked her, you know, how much longer? And she could not give me an estimate. But she said, basically, the most important thing is to keep him eating. And she says, if he will eat nothing but hot fudge, then you give him hot fudge, which I can't imagine giving my dog. But um, I understood what she meant, which is just to make sure that he's eating because he would die of not eating much faster than he would die of either of his issues that he currently has going on. Um, I'm not a scientist or doctor. I also don't quite understand, but they said that having the kidney issues, um, first of all, his urine isn't concentrating and I don't know exactly how that will affect him, but it also, uh, part of the function of the kidney, which I did not know is that it sends signals to the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. So apparently that's not happening either. So I don't know. It's all, it's all very stressful. Um, beyond that, uh, Glenn has his house from before we got together and it's been a rental since he moved in with me and it's gone pretty well, but very recently his tenants up and moved out with no notice and they destroyed the place. Um, just a rough estimate. It's probably going to be over 10 grand to fix all the damage. And as you know, when it comes to renters like that, uh, we probably will never see a dime. So super stressful, especially when you add it on top of I've already like for two months been feeling very stressed out about our finances. It's nothing that we've done specifically. Um, but it, you know, I think it's inflation paired with our cost of living uh, raises at work, if we've gotten one, have not even come close to that. And uh, just everything is more expensive. So, and, you know, we, we've planned some things for the future that we didn't realize we'd be in the predicament we are right now. So anyway, all that's quite stressful. Uh, one thing that we have been doing to kind of help is we've been doing a lot more meal prep which I have been doing meal prep for years. I've done probably four different versions now. And the one that we're currently doing is new to me and it's freezer meals, which I, I paid for a one year membership to six sister stuff, something like that. If I remember, I'll link it below in case you're interested. Um, but they give you 10 recipes per month and a shopping list and directions and everything. You put everything into your Ziploc bags and label it, put it in the freezer and then throw it in the Instapot. And it's been super easy. Uh, one of the reasons to change what we were doing was because, you know, I'm working day shift now. So with Glenn and I both gone during the day, uh, we just really need dinner to be ready quickly and something that is mostly healthy. Uh, so this morning, uh, we set out to make up 26 different freezer meals. So that's 26 different dinners. And uh, surprisingly, it only took about two and a half hours, which isn't bad at all, considering that's at least a month of food for us. Um, I've probably said this before, but we do intermittent fasting, so we just eat dinner. And that simplifies so many things. 
<laughs> so I'll uh, include a shot of all the groceries that we went and got this morning because it's a lot. And um, yeah, then we just made, uh, we made 13 different meals, but two of each. So you do them at the same time. It makes things very fast and efficient. And um, something about the um, insecurity of feeling a financial strain, it's just nice to know there's food in the freezer and I don't have to worry about it. And I was thinking about the parallels to having food in the freezer and having yarn in my stash. And I know yarn is not exactly a life or death emergency sort of thing the way that food is, but I don't know what I'd do without my knitting. So it's quite comforting right now to know that I do have a stash to pull from that I could knit very many things without having to really add much to my stash at all. So yeah, I think, uh, it, it kind of makes me think that maybe there's a reason that I stashed for as long as I did and all the things that I did. And uh, although it may feel overwhelming at times, I, I'm okay with it. Like it, it feels like it's there for a reason now. So anyway, that's some of the life stuff. Uh, I'm sorry if some of that was a downer. Um, it just kind of is what it is. I've been very overwhelmed. There was a period of time uh, around Rudy's thing where I had not cried as much in that 20 or I had not cried in the last year as much as I did in that 24 hours so that was really rough um yeah it just sucks it sucks when our our pets get old so hopefully they have some good years left I will say that Rudy has really perked up a lot since he's been able to have treats again and eat what he wants um to some extent you know that he seems to like actually be enjoying life again and it kind of makes me wonder like obviously he's having health issues but I feel like his bland diet was just making him really depressed I think dogs can get depressed um he seems much happier now so anyway um the next update we're gonna have a lot to talk about Stephen West I think so I'll leave you there and uh, I hope you all are having a wonderful day and thanks for joining me. Bye.